Brakata Yahoo, Brakata Yahoo Shai, Brakata Yahoo, Brakata Yahoo Shai, Brakata Yahoo, Brakata Yahoo Shai. Koholo and La Yahoo Bahasham Yahoo Shai. It means all praises to Yahweh Abanaw, our Father. Bahasham, in the name Yahweh Shai, his only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls it Jesus Christ. Double honors to our apostles and elders, a great millstone. In uh, salutations to all you Akim around the world, preaching the gospel in truth and in sincerity and with charity. And um, I'm going to go into a little lesson Spirit was giving me while uh, I was watching a brother, uh, Ritazawanya, a video about give not thy strength to women, check their wickedness, you know. And while and while he was um while he was talking the spirit was giving me different uh, uh scriptures and um scenarios <laughs> you know that uh that played out in the scriptures you know based off the topic of um what he was saying so first i'm going to start off with this scripture this is romans 15 and 4 it says for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope, you know. So the things that are written aforetime are written for our learning, you know, for us to um have an example, you know. So now I'm gonna go to uh, Proverbs 31 and 3. It says, Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. You know, now keep that in mind because we're gonna go back to that scripture. And I'm going to go uh, from there to, um, I'm going to go to Judges, Salakin. This is Judges 16 and verse 4. It says, And it came to pass after that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give thee every one of us eleven hundred pieces of silver. So each one of these dirty ass Hamites, you know, because the Philistines goes back to the um, to Mizraim, Matazarium, which is our, which are the Egyptians, you know, goddamn Hamites, dirty motherfuckers. But um, each one of them was giving her 1100 pieces of silver and it didn't say how many of them dirty <laughs> them dirty foot uh, marks it was you know but 1100 pieces for each one you know she sold them out it says um oh yeah because samson was beating their ass man they couldn't fuck with him uh verse six and delilah said to samson tell me i pray thee wherein thy great strength lieth and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. And Samson said unto her, If they bind me with seven green widths that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green widths, which had not been dried. And she bound them with them. Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. And she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he break the wits as a thread of toe is broken when it touches the fire, so his strength was not known. So this bitch sit here and, and set him up, you know. Verse 10. And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new ropes that never were occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith, and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait abiding in the chamber, and he brake them from off his arms like a thread. <laughs> and Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said, <laughs> and I'm going to grab a scripture real fast, because like Apostle Gabar always say, use your strapulation. So each time he can set up, he tell her what, uh, what, what a weaken him. She goes and does what it says, and each time she tell him that these Hamites is running up on him, and he's constantly steady getting back with her. But you could, like <laughs> like Apostle Gabar says, man, use extrapolation. How is he, you know, uh, uh, after hey, after that load get out, you know, uh, pillow talking as you would say. This is Micah uh, 
seven and five, I believe. Con, it says, Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide, keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. And that's the point, man. Because each time you, you uh, using the strapulation, she, he was lying in her bosom, man. Or she was lying in his bosom. This is uh, uh, verse 13. So like it. Verse 14. Uh, 13 again. And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web. And she fastened it with the pen and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awaked out of his sleep and went away with the pen of the beam and with the web. And she said unto him, How canst thou say I love thee when thy heart is not with me? Right? P playing his ass. <laughs> and, um, this is like when I read this, it comes in mind uh, the scene from um, Harlem Nights with Richard Pryor and Eddie uh, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> you know, it was uh, this prostitute on there named um, named Sunshine. You know, man, hey, you just brothers got to watch it to get it. Harlem Nights, but um, verse fifteen, and she said unto him, How canst thou say I love thee when thy heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me. These three times, and has not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart, and said unto her, There, Slocky, um, that he told her all his heart, and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon my head. For I have been a Nazarite unto the Most High from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other men. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand, right? Brought this bitch the money that she sold him out for. And she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks. Which locks wasn't dreadlocks, contrary to popular belief. It's the Hebrew word uh, machlapa, machlapa, and it says braid, lock, or plait. You know, a ringlet of hair gliding over each other. It was braids. It says, for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head, and she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. But the point is, is he got his, he got how he got himself in that situation. This is uh, wisdom of Solomon. It's like it. Not wisdom of Solomon. This is Judith. The twelfth chapter. And um I'm gonna start up at the sixteenth verse. It says, Now when Judith came in and sat down, because you got uh, to read the whole story, you know, Judith went um pretty much to uh uh to deliver the children of Israel out of this dude's hand. You know, from the council of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah that got her. This is verse 16. It says, Now when Judith came in and sat down, I believe this is the third or the fourth dinner, I believe, that he had with her. This is uh, now when Judith came in and sat down, Holofernes' heart was ravished with her, and his mind was moved, and he desired greatly her company, for he waited a time to deceive her from the day that he had seen her, right? Because he was hot on her from, from, from the stop, from the start. Then said Holofernes unto her, Drink now and be merry with us. So Judah said, I will drink now, my lord, because my life is magnified in me this day more than all the days since I was born. Because uh, I believe the other two or three dinners before, she didn't drink or eat with him. You know, she went back to her tent and ate. This is uh, verse 19. Then she took and ate and drank before him what her maid had prepared. And Holofernes took great delight in her and drank more wine than he had drunk at any time in one day since he was born. <laughs> Just because he wooed off her, right? Um, now I'm going to jump over to verse 13. 
It says, uh, uh, in Judah, verse 2, and Judah, and Judah was left alone in the tent, and Holofernes lying alone upon his bed, for he was filled with wine. Now Judith had commanded her maid to stand without her bedchamber and to wait for her, coming forth as she did daily, for she said she would go forth to her prayers, and she spake to Bogoas according to the same purpose. So all went forth, and none was left in the bedchamber, neither little nor great. Then Judah, standing by his bed, said unto her, O Lord, power of all power, look at this present upon the works of my hands for the exaltation of Jerusalem. For now is the time to help thine inheritance and to execute thy enterprises to the destruction of the enemies which are risen against us. Then she came to the pillar of the bed, which was at Holofernes' head, and took down his falchion from thence, which the falchion is a um, is a weapon. So I thought I was gonna look it. So like I thought I was gonna look it up in Google. But uh, it says took down his falchion from thence. Let me, let me see. Uh, I believe it's, it looked like a battle axe, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, verse 7, and it approached to his bed and took hold of the hair of his head and said, Strengthen me, O Lord, power of Israel this day. And she smote twice upon his neck with all her might, and she took away his head from him and tumbled his body down from the bed and pulled down the canopy from the pillars. And anon after she went forth and gave on the furnace his head to her maid, and she put it in her bag of meat. So they twain went together according to their custom unto prayer. And when they passed the camp, they compassed the valley and went up to the mountain of Bethuliah and came to the gates thereof, you know. So he was two examples of this scripture right here. Sirach 9 and verse 5. It says, Gaze not on a maid, that thou fall not by those things that are precious in her. <laughs> and Holofernes fell, you know, and, and Samson fell, right? Jump down to verse 8. Turn away thy eye from a beautiful woman. And look not upon another's beauty when it says another beauty is uh, another man's woman, right? But the point is to turn thy way, uh, turn thy eye from a beautiful woman. It says, For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman, for herewith love is kindled as a fire. You know? Many have been deceived. This is uh, First Ezra's, the fourth chapter, I believe it's the 26th verse. It says, Yea, many there be that have run out of their wits for women and become servants for their sakes. Many also have perished, have erred and sinned for women, right? Holofernes perished. You know, Samson ultimately perished. It says, And now do ye not believe me? Is not the king great in his power? Do not all regions fear to touch him, right? All regions, all his realm, which this was the uh, king of Persia during this time. You know, had a vast kingdom. So none of the, all the regions fear to touch him, right? Yet did I see him in Apame, the king's concubine, the daughter of the admiral Batarchus, sitting at the right hand of the king and taking the crown from the king's head and setting it upon her own head. She also struck the king with her left hand. And yet for all this, the king gaped and gazed upon her with open mouth. If she laughed upon him, he laughed also. But if she took any displeasure at him, the king was fain to flatter that she might be reconciled to him again. <laughs> and as the brother said in his video, man, the Jeremiah 44 spirit, man. You can't have that. Verse 32, you know, because this whole vibration is bitch made, man. As it is written, it says women uh, uh, rule over you, you know. Esau turned this shit upside down. But now, you know, we slowly but surely through the spirit and power of Abba Shami is turning this, turning this thing right side up, man. Verse 32. Oh, ye men, how can it be but women should be strong, seeing they do thus? Right? Then the king and the princes looked one upon another. So he began to speak of the truth. Right? Oh, ye men, are not women strong? Great is the earth, high as the heaven, swift as the sun in his course. For he, for he compasses the heavens round about and fetcheth, and fetcheth his course again to his own place in one day. Is he not great that maketh these things? 
Therefore, great is the truth and stronger than all things, man. You know, and that's the point. Great is the truth and stronger than all things. You know, even stronger than women, man. The truth, you know. As it is written, I am the I am, I am the way, the truth, and the life, man. No man go to the Father except by me. I believe it's uh, uh, St. John, uh, the seventh chapter, the fourth chapter, if I'm not mistaken. But it's in the book of John, you know. Yahweh Shai is the truth, man. You know, he is our wisdom. It says, uh, verse um, 36, all the earth crieth upon the truth, and the heaven blesseth it. All work shake and tremble at it, and with it is no unrighteous thing, man. And with this truth is no unrighteous thing. Like it is written in Wisdom of Solomon, the seventh chapter. This is Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 24. For wisdom, this truth, is more moving than any motion. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. For she is the breath of the power of the Most High and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Which goes back to uh, uh, Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. You know, that breath that was breathed into him, this wisdom, this knowledge, this understanding, you know. Same breath that was breathed into Adam in, in Genesis, the second chapter. For she is the breath of the power of the Most High and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, can no defiled thing fall into her. Can no defiled thing fall into her, man. Which goes back to the, uh, 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 the first edges. No unrighteous thing can uh, fall into it. I'm going to read that last part again. It says, uh, And there is no truth in them, in their unrighteous... Oh, it's like you. No, it's... um. Verse 36, Slaki. It says, All the earth crieth upon the truth, and the heaven blesseth it. All work shake and tremble at it, and with it is no unrighteous thing. Wine is wicked. The king is wicked. Women are wicked. All the children of men are wicked, and such are all their wicked works. And there is no truth in them. In their unrighteousness also they shall perish. As for the truth, it endureth and is always strong. It liveth and conquereth forevermore. With her, with her, who is her? The wisdom we just read about in Wisdom of Solomon 7 chapter. There is no accepting of persons or rewards, but she doeth the things that are just and refraineth from all unjust and wicked things. And all men do well like of her works. Neither in her judgment is any unrighteousness. And she is the strength, kingdom, power, and majesty of all ages, man. Right? Give not thy way to that which destroyeth kings, right? Blessed be the power of truth. And with that he held his peace. And all the people then shouted and said, Great is truth and mighty above all things. You know? And a part of this truth is what is written. Genesis 3 and 16, unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. That's how Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shah ordained it. That is truth, man. So as men of Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shah, as men, period, we must rule over these women, man. You know, now this is a uh, first Corinthians verse 11. It's like it. First Corinthians chapter 11. I'm going to start at the top. Be followers of me, even as I also am of Yahweh Shai. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I will have you know. That the head of every man is Yahweh Shai. And the head of the woman is the man. And that's the point. And the head of Yahweh Shai is the Heavenly Father. You know? But the point is, the head of the woman is the man, man. And if you women claim to believe in this truth, then uh, uh, hey, these scriptures speak for themselves. This is uh, Ephesians, the fifth chapter, the 22nd verse. 
Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, man. As unto Yahweh Shah. As unto this truth, as the truth uh, uh, tells you to, man. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Yahweh Shah is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Yahweh Shah, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything, man. In everything. You know. So, it's time for, man, hey, enabling, hey, like the brother said, man, you know, enabling uh, 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 the wickedness of these women, man, is no more, man. That queen of heaven spirit is dead, man. That shit played out, man. <laughs> As the brother Jeremiah in, 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 the, in our camp would say, man, being a nigga, man, is played out. And a nigga it, it, it set a woman over anything else, man. The only woman that's set up uh, over us is this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, man. You know, it's these scriptures. It's Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shah, man. You know? So with that, man, I, I hope you brothers are edified. You know, matter of fact, I said I'll go back uh, to the Proverbs. I'm going to end it out with the Proverbs. Proverbs 31 and 4. And it says, um, uh, Proverbs 31 and 3, Slaki. Give not thy strength unto women. Nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings, man. You know? And that's one of the ways which destroyeth kings, man. It's giving the strength over unto a woman. So with that, uh, uh, with that uh, all praises, honor, glory to Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh, Shai. Double honor to the apostles and elders, a great millstone and salutations to all you Akim around the world, preaching the gospel in truth and in sincerity and with all charity. You know, Lord willing, you brothers, edify. Shalom.